nope, that wasn't the aha moment. The aha moment was I was watching something and a, a Tyler Perry like little clip, clip came on on BET <laughs> and he was like something about if you got a if you got five plants and you got one pail of water and you're trying to water all these plants, this is exactly what he said. He said, but you only got this one pail of water and you're trying to water all these plants. He was like, all of them ain't going to grow. He was like, but if you take this one pail of water and you water this one plant, watch how it flourish. Right then and there, I was like, I'm quitting tomorrow. I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> the next day. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the very first episode of Elevating Entrepreneurs. And I am DeConte Allen, and this is my lovely wife. Shanae Allen. And and we are excited to bring y'all the very first episode. So we have um, really just we want to just kind of introduce ourselves, introduce what um, entrepreneurship, I guess, is to us, what our businesses are and things like that. And so um, since since we're here, we might as well let y'all know what we got going on. So um, what do you do, baby? What do you do? Uh, Let the people know. I am the owner and founder of Dollhouse Beauty Bar, and um, Dollhouse Beauty Bar is, um, it started off as a hair salon, well, it still is a hair salon, Um, back in, uh, oh, I started Dollhouse Beauty Bar in 2006, Mm. so it's been a minute. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so... If we do anything, everything from natural hair to hair extensions, um, luxury hair extensions, eye tips, keratin tips, microwaves, everything. And um, I also own Shanae Tony's collection where I make my own hair products, um, growth oil, edge control, um, lace glue, and I also sell hair extensions. And I am a real estate agent with Exit All Star Realty in Mobile, Alabama, but I service um, the complete state of Alabama as well. And um, looking forward to getting into um, commercial real estate and investment properties as well. So. Dabble a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what else you got going on? And um, in the near future, I will be um, having some some books coming for y'all. You know, some some books to help those entrepreneurs who are trying to take their businesses to the next level. Um, kind of a business consulting on the go, and um, I will be doing some one on one coaching and stuff like that. So. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, um, and also she got a, bu- a, bu- a boutique. I don't know if I, I don't, you know, I'll be messing it up. I used to have a braces. I don't think I want yeah. to do that no more. So she she got some clothes, you know. So I, when she sell that out, you know, <laughs> then she don't do it no more. But until then, she got a boutique, y'all. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Yes. That but, uh, was kind of like a trial. <laughs> that was kind of like a trial to see if I wanted to do it. You know what I mean? And like, I don't think I like it. I don't think I like that. I don't, I don't know. So I'm going to have to do me a little pop up and like sell everything for, you know, $20. Yeah. So y'all can come get these clothes and just get what I got. Go on ahead and get it. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. Um so this will take this. Uh, we're gonna unpack uh, that statement probably in another episode. We may get in a little bit into it this episode, but um, basically meaning unpack uh, that particular statement was uh, the fact that in entrepreneurship you you can put yourself in a position to try things, you know, and if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But you'll kind of figure out what you like, and that's the wonderful thing about entrepreneurship that. I love about it is like you really can't fail because you'll find out if you like it or not and you can kind of move on to something that you are more graced or more effective in and so we'll unpack that probably in another episode so I think mm-hmm. that's dope yeah yep. Yeah. so uh myself personally um uh man you know I can't say I'm a serial entrepreneur you know I don't 
really know what that means to be a serial entrepreneur. I'm, a, I'm just an entrepreneur, um, but started a company. Uh, it's called Perfect Mount um, Home Home uh, Improvement Style Company. Um, uh, uh, call call uh, me and any future technicians that's hired uh, home technology experts. Uh, but we come in, we mount TVs, we do surround sound, um, we do a, a, just a plethora of things, you know, to help improve the visualization of your home, uh, indoor, outdoor lighting, uh, ceiling fans, um, light fixtures. So we do uh, video surveillance systems um, for both residential and commercial. Um, so we, we just really specialize in bringing that business to pass. Um, also, I'm an author, wrote a book. Y'all need to go get it. It's called Making the Right Investments. Uh, you can find that one that's on lulu.com. Um, or you can go to the website, decontaallen.com, and find it. And uh, it'll point you into the links to get it. Um, also, um, uh, created a workbook. It's called the Dream Workbook. Um, it's really designed to help extract those dreams that you have in your head um, and to really manifest it, bring it to pass, um, uh, strategically placed um, to really provoke you to think and to really um, focus in on those dreams and to really bring them to fruition. So I uh, have that. Uh, also got um, sermon notes, uh, another little uh, note style uh, book that was created. You can find both of them on Amazon, by the way, um, or you can go to the website, thecontaallen.com, find it on there. And so, but that's what I got going on, working on a new book. Um, it's going to be for entrepreneurs. And so, yeah, it's going to be dope. So, that's us, man. So husband and wife, we uh, decided that we were um, going to do podcasting. So just to give you all a backstory, um, I had podcasting equipment for some years. And um, so let me see. I, as long as I can remember, I had a I, um, shoot. I know I, I, oof, I can't I don't even know how long, but I had for a number of years. I, I um I started out with like a, a Audio Technica mic. Um, I still got that stuff, you know. Uh, I started off. I had an Audio Technica. I think it's 2020, and um, I had uh, the little test cam, little uh, USB interface, and um, I utilized the equipment. Um, I have a cousin that does poetry. Shout out to Huggy Bear, the poet. Um, he uh, he actually uh, used the equipment. He recorded one of his poor albums. Um, um, you know, on that stuff. And so I had the equipment. And so I, I knew that I enjoyed, uh, business. Um, I'm a minister of the gospel. So I love the Lord. And, um, I knew that I, uh, love technology as well. So, um, I was like, I, I feel like that would be something what I would talk about, but I wasn't sure if I could provide like consistent content and stuff like that. And so I was like, man, I just don't know. And so what I ended up uh, doing was just basically having the equipment for years, not really utilizing it or doing nothing with it. It just sat in, sat in my office, to be honest, and I didn't do anything with it. And so um, um, podcasting, it, it, it kind of took off, you know, but I started listening to um, uh, one of the podcasts that I really enjoy, uh, Social Proof with David Shans and Donnie Wiggins. They dope. Yeah, very dope. If y'all hadn't, y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to their podcast. Um, they're just dope entrepreneurs and, um, I've watched, uh, their, their journey, you know, from, um, when they started, or I ain't gonna say when they started, but, um, you know, just, I've seen the growth, we'll say it like that. Uh, but in watching them and, um, and I, I was, uh, starting to see like how, how much I relate, how much we think and what we'll, you'll find out is a lot of, a lot of us entrepreneurs, we have the same similar thought pattern. Uh, we think, uh, we think, when it when it pertains to business, we kind of have those same likes, those same we share those same things, those same values, and so anyway, I was listening to them and stuff, and then it's like a light bulb hit me, you know, and I was like, man, I love this, you know, to be able to just express my thoughts and things like that. But what happened was I never considered having a podcast with a co-host, and when I met my beautiful wife, yeah. when I met my beautiful wife. Um, uh, we, while uh, we were dating, we used to have what we call dream moments. And in these dream moments, we would just really share uh, with each other. And uh, I re recommend it, you know, if you're in a relationship, your husband and wife, you know, um, 
uh, have those moments where you could take the time to kind of share um, each other's thoughts, you know, of, of what you desire to do and stuff like that. But then anyway, we would have these dream moments and we would just have such dope con- uh, conversation concerning entrepreneurship and, and about anything, really. And um, and I think, uh, was, were we married when I asked you about the podcast? Like if you, I can't remember if, I think we, I think we might've been, we, we might, I think we were I either, remember. we were probably on the verge of getting married or we might've just gotten married or something to that. I think we, I think we wasn't married. Yeah. Uh, but I asked her, um, would she be interested? I know, I think we were actually, um, preparing for, for the ceremony and all that stuff. Uh, but, um, I asked her, I just had an idea one day and I thought one day and I was like, man, you know what? I was like, I wonder if she would be willing to do podcasting with me. And um, and man, I tell you, um, I just started smiling because I started thinking about our conversations that we have, you know. And so I asked her and she was on board. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah, because I was like, oh, yeah, I had thought about doing a podcast, too. Mm-hmm. So. so long story short, when she said, yeah, you know, uh. As you can see, a whole bunch of different equipment, you know, went ahead, hit the ground running with it because um, as you all will see as we um, do these episodes in which we'll talk about uh, a lot of things, entrepreneurship, you know, because, man, whew, when I tell you we we experience some stuff. <laughs> we have. But we'll also get into, yeah. like, family, you know, as you will see, it's not going to always be this quiet. Our kids are at school. <laughs> <laughs> our kids are at school right now what because our say. daughter thinks that she's a part of the podcast. Man, what you say? <laughs> um, so yeah, she's she's ready. Absolutely. And um, and we'll get into you know juggling all of these things while trying to entrepreneur and run businesses and you know different things. Life basically, life yeah. while while business. Absolutely. <laughs> While running businesses as well. Absolutely, man. And I tell you, it's just, um, it's exciting. You know, uh, one of the things I say, um, I say this a lot at church, you know, um, what a great time to be alive. What a great time to be alive, man. Um, I mean, life, it can throw all kinds of challenges at us and everything. But the reality is, it's a great time that we're still on this side of the dirt. And, um, and yeah. One of the things that I really enjoy um, is 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 business, and um, and as an entrepreneur, we just we face things, you know. Um, man, we face so much, you know, from you know different things with different relationships, like uh, business partners, investors, or um, friends, family, um, you know, parenting. Uh, just therapy, you know, all kinds of stuff we need and, you know, self personal development growth and all that. And so it's just a lot we could talk about, um, you know, concerning this particular uh, topic, you know, and so uh, we just going to come to y'all, you know, we're to be, it ain't going to always be polished. You know what I'm saying? We just uncut and raw. Yeah. We just going to give it to you, you know, and um, you know, if we have thoughts in the middle of something or aha moments, you're going to see it. You know, so, <laughs> you know, if we get an idea, we may pause and write it down. You know what I'm saying? Because as an entrepreneur, you get them ideas, you know, you got to make sure you get it to where you remember because your mind is always going, you know, and you have so much, uh, you know, man, you should see my wife, you know, she'll, she'll be in the midst of something. She'll be like, oh, pull that phone out, you know. <laughs> I don't so, know. Yeah. It's so weird because I could be sleep. <laughs> Oh, I man. will wake up in the middle of the night <laughs> out of my sleep and pick my phone up and be like, uh uh-uh, uh, I gotta write this down real quick. Straight up. Like, my, I don't know what it is with my mind. It does not let me sleep sometimes. I'll be like, <laughs> I gotta write this down. I gotta write this down. I think about the weirdest stuff in my dream. Like, <laughs> how did it? I don't even be knowing what be going on sometimes. <laughs> I'll be laughing at her, too. She'll wake up. She'll be like, oh, when I finally wake up or when she wakes me up. <laughs> she'll be so salty. But um, um, she'll share with me sometimes, you know, like what happened. She was like, babe, you know, she'll, and, and it's interesting. And I believe it's a way God can com- communicate with her because um, um, she'll have, she'll wake up at times. And when she shares certain things with me, she'll, 
uh, she'll say, you know, I was thinking about this, that, and the other when I woke up because of what I dreamed about or she'll dream about it. And it'd be, uh, you know, specific matters. And uh, and uh, I'll just be like, man, did I say that right? Specific. <laughs> did I say it right? You did. Yeah, I did. Good. Man, listen. <laughs> I used to say, yeah, I specific say? be tearing him up, <laughs> baby. Be tearing him up. Hey, I don't know if it's a South thing because a lot, I think a lot of us used be to do Pacific. Do it. Mm-hmm. What straight, is? straight ocean around here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she, uh, she helps me, helps me to do better with my uh, vernacular, if you will. But, um, but yeah, um, uh, I, I really, I really want to give them something. You know what I'm saying? I want to give them something. You know, we kind of introduced ourselves, but you know, I really want to want to kind of unpack something for it for them. You know, okay. and Let's um, what you got? and so um, I really uh, what what made you what made you get into entrepreneurship? How about I was just about to ask you the same question? Straight up, straight up. I mm-hmm. literally was just gonna ask you the same question. <laughs> so raw and uncut. Okay, so. What made me get into entrepreneurship? Craziest thing is, like, honestly, I had my kids young. So when I had my son, I was, like, I was 19. Um, And I was in, I'm from California. I'm originally from California. And, yeah, I had this great idea. I had this great (laughs) idea to move 2,000 miles away from my family, um, to come here with their dad, yeah, and his family. So I really didn't have, like, the support, you know, system or whatever. So, like, whenever my kids would, like, get sick, I would have to be the person to take off work. But what was so crazy was I made more money. Why I'm the person taking off work? Like, I thought that was just crazy. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. I was the person that would always have to take off work. Like, so I would always take, I have to take off work to go get the kids. Like if they got sick, if something happened, if they were sick and couldn't go to school, I was always missing work, even though I never got like fired or anything. At one point I was just like, you know what? And I always did hair. Like even when I worked the job, I always did hair like on the side or whatever. So I was like, you know what? I just, I don't know why I love doing hair. But I just felt like I had to have this career. You know what I mean? So I was going to school to be a medical assistant. And I was taking accounting. You know what I mean? Because I was taking accounting because my uncles and them, they are all CPAs. And I was, and I'm a math girl, so I love numbers. So I was going to be, you know, going to school to be an accountant. And I was taking, you know, my minor in, you know, nursing. But that sucked really bad. So I switched that real fast. Um <laughs> Because when it started to be like, you got to do the CNA stuff first and you got to change pampers. I was like, oh, no, don't want to do that no more. I switched real fast to human resource management. So I was doing accounting and I had um, a minor in human resource management. So I started working at a a healthcare place, Alabama Orthopedic. Mm. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to keep going to school, but I'm not about to keep on working at this job. So I just started doing hair full time. And it was like every time I would have to like leave my job or something, I would always fall back on hair. And I was like, you know what? This just, nope, that wasn't the aha moment. The aha moment was I was watching something and a a Tyler Perry like little clip clip came on on (laughs) BET and he was like, Something about if you got a if you got five plants and you got one pail of water and you're trying to water all these plants. This is exactly what he said. He said, but you only got this one pail of water and you're trying to water all these plants. He was like, all of them ain't going to grow. He was like, but if you take this one pail of water and you water this one plant, watch how it flourish. Right then and where I was like, I'm quitting tomorrow. I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> the next day. <laughs> Man, I quit so fast. And so... After I quit, y'all, that was it. I just kept doing hair, kept doing hair, kept doing hair. And um, now, like, I get people, like, certain people sometimes ask me, like, you still do hair? Yep. Like, every day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, I guess because I don't advertise, 
But I don't have to. My clientele is very steady. I don't have to advertise. I've been doing hair for a really long time. So it it does what it does for me. So that that's basically what did it for me. Man, it's amazing. it's always been a fallback. Like it's it's been that constant for me. So it's always been great. Yeah. Quick plug. She's also a tax professional too, y'all. So y'all holler at your girl. Yeah. <laughs> Come get y'all taxes done. Man, that's amazing. Um, I can't say that I had like an aha mo- moment. Um, I wasn't raised in entrepreneurship. I just had some kind of. I don't really know what triggered that in me, but I know like when I was younger, I used to like invent stuff. Like I had always had like a creative mind. So uh, I would like take apart my toys, which I think a lot of boys may do if we ain't just tearing them up. But I used to um, take apart my toys, but then I would put, use the pieces of different toys to put it together to create something else. Um, One of the things I did, I think when I was uh, so young, let me see. I think I had like a, I don't know if you remember them Dick Tracy uh, walkie-talkie watches or whatever. And so uh, my my popsy had bought me a set of those. Uh, prob- I, I think I lost the other one like whenever I lost it. And uh, But I had one. And um, so I, and, and they used to have those little battery power handheld fans, um, you know. I thought those were just the coolest thing. And so what I did was I took a took apart the Dick Tracy watch. I took apart the little um, handheld fan, and I, I took the motor out the fan, and I like some kind of way uh, carved a little hole out so the motor <laughs> pin can stick up through the what you call it, and put the fan propeller on it. And so I called it a fan watch, you know. And um, I I probably was no more than like. Uh, maybe like six or seven or something like that, you know. And um, I took it to a choir rehearsal. We was going to church uh, that particular night. We was in Citronelle and, um, you know, took <laughs> took it to choir rehearsal and I had the little battery, put it on there and the little fan propeller going. And uh, you would have thought I invented something that was revolutionary or something because they was like, you did that, you know, because I guess I was so young and, you know, and so they thought, you know, but I had that creative mindset, but, uh, I guess entrepreneurship just ship just kind of found me, but at the at the core of it, I think I got my first major taste of it was uh through network marketing. Um and I can't remember exactly which company it was, but it was a network marketing um um company that uh someone I met, um they introduced me to kind of a uh another side of things. Um and so I could remember in uh, doing different ones, and I tried different network marketing companies, but I think the one that was the most impactful that I was involved in was uh, uh, Primerica. Um, I was going to say that. Yeah, and so once um, once I got involved with them, um, that's when things started kind of resonating with me as far as entrepreneurship because I could – I could. Uh, I was in settings where these uh, multimillionaires were up, and they were speaking and talking about things. And what they were saying, I was like, I think like that. I, you know, I was like, I think like that. You know, I, I was like, I, I was relating so much, and I was like, I think like this. You know, but I was like, but the money ain't there. You know, so I was like, I got the thoughts. I could uh, articulate. Um, or, or get the message projected out there and this, that, and the other, but the income wasn't backing up, you know, so I was like, so I got a discrepancy somewhere, so <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was, uh, that's how I felt about it, so I was like, man, but um, but that's how I kind of got introduced into more so of the um, the the entrepreneurship uh, thing, because I, like, my family, um, none of them that I knew of growing up were involved in any type of business ventures or anything like that. I didn't see anybody working on nothing that they created and started. Well, shout out to yeah. my mama. <laughs> shout out to my mom because my yeah. mom used to go get it. That's where I got it from. <laughs> my mom did hair like since she was in the seventh grade. Like I think I started in the seventh grade too. Mm. Like my mom has been doing hair since she was in the seventh grade. And my mom like made clothes too. Like she can sew. Like, she could make a whole outfit and all kind of stuff. But she stopped sewing, like, after she got out of, like, high school. But my mom did hair. And, like, when I say my mom used to do, like, 
everybody hair, everybody mom, but my mom only does did like braids. Mm-hmm. So she everybody in everybody in the hood used to come to my mom. Like when I say my mom used to make money, like she used to make so much money doing hair. And that's like how I got my first little taste of it. I used to be like, man, look. <laughs> like we man, me and my brother used to man. already know, like, <laughs> oh, let me see how many heads she got. <laughs> Oh, okay. We yeah, going what? shopping this weekend. <laughs> yeah, we're calculating the pockets. <laughs> <laughs> we going shopping this weekend. Yeah. Okay. But my mom used to stay busy like from sun up to sundown. Like she would do like five, six heads a day of braids. Yeah. Like that's that's a lot of that's yeah. a lot of heads for braids. Yeah. For you know what I mean? So she used to do, and then I mean, they used she's to have like, quick with it, huh? yeah, she braid fast, like bas, yeah. you know what I mean? Like basket weaves and stuff. You remember that the things that people used to have over their head, like the little, and then it go in like it's crocheted. I used to, she used to do all that little crazy, weird looking stuff. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to my mom. My mom used to be hustling, yeah. but um, I think too, um, I learned a lot from my mom. Like as far as I learned how to get the money, but. Um, one thing I learned from my mom is like my mom didn't strategize her business. And so that's where it came in was like, okay, she she knew how to get the money, but she didn't know how to make like how to keep the money. Yeah, I got you. Like she make it spend it type of thing. Yeah. Like I she would you. make the money and she because she made it so fast, she she spent it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So she, you know what I mean? I feel like, you know, if you're making money like that, make your money, make you money. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You don't yeah. want to just make That's it good. and spend it. And then two, you want to, like with, as being an entrepreneur, money is power. So basically you want to have a money trail. All the money you make, you want to deposit every, especially if you're getting paid cash. You want to deposit every single dollar you make. That's why it's very important to have um, a system where your clients can pay you credit cards and through debit card and and things like that. You want to have a processing system put in place so that your money can go directly to the bank because you need to have a money trail. Because event you want to have um, some kind of paper trail where people can know what you're making, so you can have some type of buying power. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, man, what she's saying is so true because if you, you know, if you're trying to say grow the business and you need to say get some additional funding and you ain't got no paper trail, you're gonna be stuck, right? <laughs> you know? And and it's, it it'll suck because you could be at a point to where you you could you have the money as far as like on where you you're making the money but you don't have the proof basically. It's kind of like going to court, you know, you ain't got evidence that you're making, actually making the money if they can't, if you can't present them with nothing. Yeah. yeah. And then I know a lot of people too, where they do um, just wait to the end of the year and then they file it on their tax returns. That's cool too. That's cool too. But still it's, um, when you're dealing with um, big money lenders, not banks, they want to see your bank statement. Yeah, they yeah. don't want to see your tax returns. Absolutely. Absolutely. So your tax returns work for banks, but when you're dealing with um, multi-million dollar lenders, they want to see your bank statements. Yeah. So they want to see the cash flow. They want to yeah, see what you're bringing indeed. in monthly. You know what I mean? Yes, so, indeed. so you have to you gotta show them that paper, y'all. Yeah. So you know, think about it. Like even say you're an an investor, right? And um, you have you know, uh, a couple million dollars that you need to just invest for tax purposes, you know, to make sure your books are straight, right? And so if I'm coming to you and you be like, hey, you know, let me see, let me see you, 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 which kind of money you're bringing in, this, that, and the other. And uh, and I can know you personally, right? And uh, But the way your company is designed, if, if I got to present certain documentation and I ain't got these documentations, but I know you know I make money, you know, it, it's kind of like you're going out on a limb to say, hey, I will I can lend this to you or whatever because I know you, but it it would assure you more if I have that paper trail to show. You know what I'm saying? And so, man, I mean, it's, it's, 
You just got to have do what she's saying, y'all. Do what you said, you know. We done that just money. went all the way into a whole nother <laughs> subject, but it just made me bring that up because I thought yeah. about that because, um, because I was, um, I was in a, what was I look? I was in a, I was watching a live, mm. and um, the man was talking about um, it was something with a tax return, but the girl was like, "Well, I filed my taxes and I claim everything at the end of the year," but one thing about it is. Self-employment um, taxes can be falsified. Yeah, yeah. Bank statements can't. Yeah, absolutely. You can falsify. Um, you can claim whatever you want to. I can claim I made $200,000 this year. Mm-hmm. Who's to say I didn't? Yeah. They they won't. The, uh, the IRS ain't going to tell you didn't. As long as you pay them taxes on that $200,000, they don't care if you made it or not. You said that you made it. But you said you made it in cash. They can't prove that you didn't have the cash. Now, bank statements, you can't lie on those. Yeah, Either you deposited it or you didn't. And most lenders actually want both. They want your bank statements and the tax returns. You know, from, um, uh, I remember um, um, uh, having to present, you know, I went to went to uh, a bank um, to it was a, was it yeah it's a bank yeah I thought it was a credit union but I went to a bank and uh, I just wanted to inquire some information on um, getting some land and so they was telling me the things that they need and they wanted both they wanted really? yeah they wanted uh, bank statements as well as my tax returns like for the past couple so of years or they something probably like wanted that. to yeah. match them up to make sure make they, sure yeah so make sure they match I, yeah so I would imagine that people would probably in times past was you know they probably didn't have such strict rules or whatever with certain things or whatever but because people was fabricating things and this that and the other and I'm sure they probably had like some chargebacks and different things like that where they lost out on on certain deals. But yeah, so they just essentially they just want to protect their their investment, you know, yeah. and which is understandable. So because if I'm investing in anything, I want to make sure that you're making money, you know, for one thing that I just that's the most important thing in business, making sure you're making money, because if you're making money, you got a proven concept. And I ain't gonna <laughs> lie to you. I don't want no tax return. I want to see your bank statements. Yeah, <laughs> I do taxes. You I don't, want, I don't want no tax return. I want to see your bank statement. <laughs> Yes, indeed. You know what I mean? I didn't. I want to see bank statements. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. So, um, I think we'll wrap this up here because uh, we're getting ready to start diving into some some stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because we, I mean, listen, y'all. When I tell y'all, we are we are uh, passionate and we just love entrepreneurship. My wife and I, we talk about business a lot. You know, we piggyback ideas off of each other. She pours into me, I pour into her, you know, it's just, it's, it's an awesome dynamic to be yoked up with somebody who's um, on the same wavelength when it comes to like entrepreneurship and stuff like that. So I'm really, um, really excited about what we'll be bringing to you all. And I hope y'all enjoy y'all be sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll post it. Um, we'll post it on, uh, I am underscore DeConte on YouTube. Um, uh, we may, I don't think we're going to do it on our family channel. No. Yeah. Um, on the family channel, y'all will just probably see like clips of some if the kids, you know, doing crazy. But we got that channel reserved for the kids. But it's um, Blended the Allen Way. Uh, that's our other YouTube channel. Y'all be sure y'all subscribe to those channels. But uh, we will catch y'all in the next episode. Man, I'm telling you, we going to pump out some amazing and dope content for you all. And let us know if y'all have any questions or have anything that you guys want to know about entrepreneur-wise. Oh, yeah. And uh, the podcast on all all the audio platforms um, that you can listen to podcasts on, you can find us, Elevating Entrepreneurs uh, with uh, DeConte and Shanae Allen. You can find us on any of those platforms. Y'all be sure y'all... Follow us on social media. Um, on Twitter, it's I am underscore DeConte. Facebook, I am DeConte, I believe. Um, and Instagram is I am underscore DeConte. And fan base, I am underscore DeConte. How about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on everything. Facebook, <laughs> Shanae Tonys. Um, Instagram is um, at she underscore 
S-S-U-C-H-A-D-O-L-L. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Good deal. We'll catch y'all in the next episode. Bye.